so it's hot it's humid it's the middle of summer and who really wants to think about gardening down in florida when it comes to just like ugh. and while things like vegetable gardens could be struggling when it comes to a native butterfly garden florida's got it beat so today we're going to check out three different native butterfly gardens here in my yard from the original florida native plant landscaping project that we did starting august last year to the monarch milkweed butterfly garden to another butterfly garden all of them, oh, I hope they get you inspired to go put in your own native butterfly garden. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's start first with the original Florida native plant landscaping project, our native butterfly garden. Oh my gosh, this is looking so good. While other things are struggling right now in the summer because it's too hot or it's too much water or there's too much something going on, native plants, chef's kiss mwah, looks great i'm so excited about this and there's just been some beautiful things happening so let's go in and let's first start with the trellis because hello hello i am loving this combination oh my gosh let's just look at the spot right here where we have actual passion flowers with our coral honeysuckle just so pretty and one of the things that when i was putting in the coral honeysuckle honeysuckle you'll remember I was wondering am I gonna get the scent you know we had that invasive honeysuckle and it has that gorgeous scent and I was wondering could our native fill in for that and the answer is no no it does not it does not have that gorgeous scent but you know who does these passion flowers these passion flowers are so beautiful and they smell so good every time I walk through this tunnel the, the scent is just gorgeous it's just so pretty and I'm loving the color combination I mean you just have those coral flowers coming in I've got constantly have new passion flowers coming in oh they're just so pretty I mean look at this flower 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 I mean they're coming in I'm getting more on the northern side of the arch than I do over on the southern side, but I mean, I'm not mad. <laughs> like, it looks so good. Oh, so if you've got a space where you want to have some vines, I so recommend this, this combination. I am so happy with it. It is better than I thought it would. Now you remember with the jasmine that we took out, I was really worried about the fact that, you know, getting up into these gutters. And the maypaw passion vine and that coral honeysuckle, they do, they try to, but I think the difference is, is that we're dealing more with, you know, the green type of vining than we are with a um, kind of a more woody vine that I was dealing with with the, with the jasmine. But this is doing great. The only thing that's like really the watch out, and I think I talked about it in one of the recent videos, is that we are getting runners down in here for the passion vine, which who cares? I don't care about that. I can pick them. That's easy. More of what I get worried about is they end up over here in my neighbor's yard, but he doesn't care either apparently because I, I apologized him the other day because I went picking and he just said, you know what, that's fine. More for me too. And I was like, oh, Mr. Cliff, I think he's picked them recently because we've had a bunch under this fire bush. I mean, can, hello, even though this isn't my garden, but his fire bush, ever since that we started sharing mulch, it has taken off. The first three years I lived here, this was scraggly and sad. And then he started just taking that really good mulch that we got from Chip Drop, and it is shrubbing out. So just for the butterflies, I mean, look at it. They've got fire bush all along here in his yard. And then you've got coral honeysuckle, maypop passion vine here. I mean, they just got a lot to work with. But let's come down here to the front, which was I think phase three or phase two, I can't remember now. And let's see what's going on. So first off, seaside goldenrod. It died back in the winter when we got into our kind of coldest months. And then since spring, I mean, it's going up and it's taller than it ever was before. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this for the fall when it starts getting some blossoms. And it actually does get some blossoms even though, you know, fall's it's like main time. So there was a, a stalk right here and I cut it back because it actually had flowered. And look at this, it already flowered again. Now I've been, paying attention to this because when it does start to seed these little seeds fly away in the wind and they're getting all up in my vegetable garden which not as big of a fan of them being over there not mad about it but just you know 
take a pass on that. So I'm excited. I mean, look at this. This is taller than me. This has got to be what, six feet tall right now and it hasn't even started to flower. And we're just, we're getting even more stalks than we had before. So that's really exciting. So this I think is going to just keep filling in with that seaside goldenrod. And then down here filling in nice and low. Who's this? Hello, sweet goldenrod. You are looking great. Now I haven't used it for any of its like medicinal herb type replacement stuff yet because I really want it to just grow in. But I love the way it's looking. Now it's leaning over because we had uh, Tropical Storm Elsa or Hurricane Elsa, whatever. It kept changing by the hour what level it was going to be. So some of my taller plants have taken a good lean over. Not the seaside though. Nope, nope, nope. But the sweet goldenrod is and i'm hoping we can i can like either do some propagation to get more of it over here because i love having the low and then the high i think that's like a really good mix now let's talk about one of the other plants that was in this area and i know so many of you were worried for me and that was spiderwort and it actually did do a little bit of dieback but it's it's still going i mean it's not i know you all were worried it was going to take over the area and honestly, through the spring dry season, it did die back quite a bit. Oh, but look at this, how fuzzy this is. Can you see the fuzzies on here? Is it picking it up in the light? Look at that, that's so cute. So I'm, I mean, this is the battle royale here between natives. All of these can be annoying because they spread too much, which I love because guess what? I'm a good pruner. I'm getting better at it. I'm not great at it. Okay, I'm good at it, but <laughs> honestly, the spider wart's been doing fine. I'm guessing during the, as we go through this rainy season, they'll probably continue to spread because it likes it a little bit wetter. And this area doesn't get, you know, really, really wet. So I think it's gonna spread some more come summer, fall, but we'll see. Now the ironweed that was back here never came back. And that's not surprising. It died back in winter and there was too much mulch there. So nothing really happened. Let me see if I can get a better shot of this. But really down here, you see there's a lot of green. This is all that narrow leaf yellow top. Sorry, narrow leaf yellow top, here we go. And so let's see them. So we were, have been getting lots of flowers throughout spring and as we've been heading into summer. Look at that, very pretty. I actually just pruned it back. I feel like this area is looking really good because about three, four weeks ago, I pruned everything back because it was becoming a little hot mess over here and on the side of the house. Um, but it's looking really good getting very bushy and filling in it's kind of coming in and getting um helping kind of the feet area oh my goodness i didn't even realize look at it it's all up in here but i like having plants that are lower because the way that the coral honeysuckle is going to grow you know it's going to stay more up so i need something that kind of takes care of the base so what has gotten me thinking because you can see over here you know we got a lot of the height happening but nothing down low so at some point, I'm gonna put something else down here to kind of just keep the feet of the vines happy and, you know, just add. Always add. Always have a reason and an excuse to grow more stuff, right? And let's move over to the original. Oh my goodness. This has been looking better and better and better. Let me back up so it kind of you can compare to the original, original. Look how green this is looking. I mean, come on. And you remember the beauty berries? That big that big now you're probably wondering why is this one not so big well i did a lot of pruning because they were all over this sidewalk so i gave them a good hard prune on anything that was blocking the sidewalk because getting our gorgeous trash can out of the way um, was a big deal to get it back and forth every week so i prune everything back just to make the walkway easier but look at this and i mean we're getting the height on this one not surprising because it gets more full sun this one's going to get a little bit more shade from things like the arches um, but I think this one's going to end up, it's already self-correcting. You can see some of the prune spots because this one was coming more out towards the east. And you can see it's already starting to grow more stuff that it should go more up now, especially that everything that was kind of blocking it from doing that is gone. So I expect that in the next few months, we're going to start filling in this space better, cover that wall up, which would be good. And then kind of in the middle here, this is looking way better. It was also growing all over the sidewalk. Kind of the main plants that still exist from the original one is the scorpion tail. You remember the scorpion tail had been not happy. Oh, what are you? Hello. Can I find you on the camera? Oh, I lost you. Okay, well, hi, look at the scorpion tail. It looks great. 
we were sad in the summer. Oh, oh, I see it again. Okay, sorry, we're taking this momentary break to enjoy a new butterfly that I've not noticed before. Okay, bye. All right, so let's get back to the scorpion tail. Okay, so the scorpion tail, and I guess this little butterfly, if you know what this is, please tell me. I'll do research later. Um, put it in the comments down below. But yeah, so the scorpion tail, which was like so sad through winter and early spring, look at it. Got a good prune. It's happy. We have lots of cute little flowers. It's filled in really nicely. We obviously have some cute silver butterfly with red wings on, red tip wings. I'm loving it. It looks so good. We've got some nice wasps doing their jam over here. The lantana has been pruned back multiple times. It likes to grow into the path. It's looking good. It looks good. It's happy. And then we got our beads balm back here, which is looking droopy and sad. Does yours look droopy and sad? It looks like, oh, it's probably just because it's super hot right now in the middle of the day. Would be my guess. It didn't look this way yesterday when I was looking at it. The other bees balm, bye bye. It died. I think this location is just not happy. We'll have to think about this. We'll have to figure out what we're going to do back here. But overall, we're filling in really nicely. Um, and of course, our morning glory is just doing its thing, it's spreading all over the place, and I constantly pull back. The other plant from, I think, phase two or three, or I don't remember what, was Stokes Aster. These have already flowered, and now they're at seed. I've snagged some of the seeds. I've thrown some of the seeds down. This I want to spread more of because, oh gosh, Stokes Aster is pretty as all get out. So more of this. Very excited. So what do you all think? Because we're getting up close to a year from the original start of the project. Some things have worked. Some things haven't. But I think overall, I mean... I'm happy with what we've got but it's gonna evolve and I think that's the fun of gardens is it's just not one time you continue to work on it as you go hello butterflies and if you're enjoying all the work I do with native plants to create butterfly gardens and wildlife spaces and just really pretty gardens go ahead and check out the join button down below and you can join the wild Floridian membership where you get extra bonuses and you help support my channel more than just watching the videos and sitting through those ads so look for the join button down below and let's get back to looking at the tour of all of our Florida native plants so let's start with the new butterfly garden. This is the Monarch Swamp Milkweed Butterfly Garden. I am super excited. Can we first, can we just appreciate that giant ironweed going up the pine? Is that not absolutely gorgeous? I mean, oh, the flowers are so pretty. Look at them. Ugh. Oh. Definitely the butterflies have been liking them. And as we've been releasing monarchs, we've been putting them on this plant and they've enjoyed it. I think they've enjoyed it. And with the swamp milkweed, I think it was 10 or 12 plants we put in here. Look at how nicely they filled in. And then with the combination of the native porter weed, I think this, oh, I just love the combination. And you can see the Coreopsis in the back and then our black eyed Susans, you know, they keep going to seed and then putting out new flowers. Overall, really pretty. And where we saw some of the best survival of activity from our caterpillars was where the porter weed had covered up the bases of these swamp milkweeds first because I think what was happening is they were going they were surviving our predators by getting underneath the porter weed so I think it's a really nice combination that if you're going to start a butterfly garden down here in Florida or any of the regions where you can put this combo or look for a combo that's similar to this right where you have something really low and then these kind of come up like sticks coming through and look what I just saw. Look who's here. Hello. Did you put your chrysalis under there? Are you just drying your wings? I think you are. I see you. Amazing. So it looks like we have a new female, if I saw the wings correctly. Super exciting. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. Live for you on camera. <laughs> But I really like this. It's kind of an awkward spot originally when we were trying to figure out what to do with this area because it's not perfectly circular. You have the sidewalk on the other side and you can get more of the idea of the yellows from this side, which I think is really pretty. And even our aquatic little white swamp milkweeds down here are doing good. They don't get lost in the mix. So that's been great. And then, you know, I've been trying to kind of rearrange these guides. I've got to figure out how I'm going to cover the feet on these ones because they're kind of just exposed. 
but we'll figure that out. We got time and we can see we've had a lot of new caterpillar activity. This is kind of what I was talking about in that vlog um, that I went over kind of <laughs> the life cycle of the butterfly. Is this is what I would see, a lot of new caterpillar activity, but not really having any new caterpillars to go with it. So we know we continue in these very exposed areas to have issues with this. So, but that's okay. We're gonna keep working it. Clearly we're getting new butterflies. We just saw one. So it's very exciting. I just, I love the color combination. And then you just get this pink in the mix. I'm coming from the plumeria. The plumeria is right up above. Not native, but I'm not gonna get rid of a good old tree. Look at the Coreopsis. So pretty, so pretty. And there's the pale pink of the Florida native swamp milkweed. So pretty, cool. Okay, so let's go see our third native butterfly garden and go check out how that one's going. So what has happened is, yes, is this looking good? No, this is a mess. This is a total mess. Let's own the moment. Let's own the fact that we don't always do everything right. And it looked so good before. You've seen the footage of it. But what happened was the summer came and late spring and this tree filled in nicely. It's giving a lot of great deep shade all the time. And these are full sun type plants. Maybe a little bit of shade, but they don't like this. So your Coreopsis, which we saw over in the other location, which looked great, not is all dying back. Our blanket flower, all dying back. The only things that seem to be surviving is sunshine mimosa down in here and our twin flower. So actually I'm really excited about this and I've been thinking about, well, maybe this just becomes like a nice low bed of twin flower, maybe mixed with some sunshine mimosa. And the other one that seems to be doing okay, not like great, is that beach verbena. So we're still getting those flowers and still growing, but you can see, look at this, this looks stressed. So I'm not totally thrilled with what's going on here, but you know what, we learned something. We learned about kind of the cycle of the leaves of our Ponciana up above, even though it's not native, um, but that's okay. It's doing what I wanted to do, which was shade the area. I've pruned it back, which has allowed some more sun in the area, but we're gonna need to do something different. And we were going to anyways, because yes, <laughs> it's going into my vegetable garden which is okay, I'm not mad about it, but we get to change it up and that's okay because if you are like me, you love a new gardening project. So we're gonna just have fun making this into something totally new, but we got to try it out. But if you had taken the same combination and done it like around the pine that we had over there for our other butterfly garden, you know, your results would have been different because this gets mostly sun all day. So this would be a very different thing. If you had something like a plumeria, not native, but that's okay. But something that gets a lot of sun underneath it and it's kind of got more of a high crown, this would have worked better. But the Ponciana, not, it's not working so great. But you know what the other cool thing is? Is not really a butterfly garden, but is this space. So I did some pruning of our native firebush. I did more pruning on this native firebush because it was just growing up and I really wanted to start growing out. So I wanted to put its energy in the the forward because these were planted exactly the same time and they were pretty much the same size. Now this gets a little more shade so that makes sense why I did it. And this is just a bunch of pruning clippings I threw down to help my sweet potatoes which are not native. But what I've been thinking is is pruning this back more and then doing another native garden bed right here because then I'll be at the window looking out. Butterflies, birds, lizards, all good things and we can have some fun looking out this window. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing all the different types of Florida native plant combinations so that you can make a native butterfly garden. And if you wanna start from the very beginning where we put in the first plants and took out a bunch of invasive, go ahead and check out this for the entire playlist for the Florida Native Plant Landscaping Project, or check out this for the basics of butterfly gardening. Okay, I'll see you soon.